So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting product. And the reason why it falls into the really interesting part is because of the amount of features this thing packs and for the price it's actually selling for. So this is selling for around $22 right now. And let's talk a little bit about some of the features here. So this is the Racer Star Mellow, I think they're calling it. It's an F4 flight controller, not, not an all-in-one, it's a flight controller. So it's an F4 MPU 6000 gyro, which is good. And if we flip it over, we have SD card expansion. We have Bluetooth functionality, which I'll show you how to connect to. Not only that, it even has a 10 volt regulator. That is insane. Now, how good is the 10 volt regulator? I can't answer that for you, to be honest, until I go out and test it. And this is going on a budget build because it's packing so much for so cheap, it's insane. It needs to be tested. So we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into this flight controller and also show you how to connect this if you are purchasing this, so you know how to connect everything from iBus to SBus to your VTX. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing you always wanna take a look at when you get a flight controller is find the arrow. This is very important, especially if you're new, because if you place it any other way, your quadcopter will never fly and could hurt you because it'll just constantly try to turn to correct itself. So keep that in mind. So the arrow key is very important and that should be pointing towards your camera and the front of the quadcopter. So this would be installed like this with the USB up on the left here. Now here we have a boot button. This is if you ruin something with the software. What you can do is you would hold the boot button and then you would plug in the USB and it'll go into recovery mode and then you'll be able to flash the firmware that you need. Now for the firmware version, it's running the Matic F405 version right now. So that's gonna be good in that perspective. Now it's claiming to have five UARTs, but you're actually only going to be able to use four because the fifth UART is utilizing the Bluetooth connectivity here. So keep that in mind. So in reality, you only have four unless you want to turn off the Bluetooth functionality. And again, we're going to take a look at what do I mean in a bit once we get to that step. As you can tell, it has connectors up top and some people might hate that, but if you flip it over, it's all soldering pads. So they don't give you any of the connectors, but what they do provide you is a ton of silicone wires, which is really great. And that's what we're going to need to actually build this thing. What I recommend you do if you are purchasing this and you're gonna be building it, is if you've watched any of my previous build videos, I like to start soldering everything to the flight controller first, from my camera wires, to my video transmitter wires, to the receiver wires, because then when I install it, then it's just a simple install here. However, this is gonna be slightly a bit different because you also need to run uh, the ESC signals from here. And that is what we're gonna cover right now. So let's first start off with the receiver. So let's just say we have an S bus. I'm also gonna cover I bus. So if you had an S bus receiver, where would you connect this? Well, we're gonna have to go to the bottom here and we wanna take a look at these three pads right here. They're very important here and let me explain why. So we have ground, something that says 4.5, and the S bus. So the S bus would be your signal wire, your S bus wire. The red wire would be on the 4.5 volts, and I'll explain what the 4.5 means. And the ground would be the black wire here from your receiver. Now the 4.5 is very important because when you plug in the USB, this means that it'll give the receiver power. Not all flight controllers do that, but if you were to use another five volt for your receiver, then you will not be able to power the receiver with just connecting the USB. So it's really nice to install your receiver here. Now this covers S bus. Now if you have I bus or spectrum where you'd wanna go put your signal, you'd still put the power here. You would put the signal on RX3. Now both of these are RX3 and I did a beta flight setup guide if you don't know how to enable those in the beta flight. So this is where your I bus or spectrum would go. And if you had S bus, that's where it would go. And this is your power and spectrum. If you're running 3.3 volts, then you would wanna put your red wire right here. So that's all set and done. Now the next thing you'd wanna power up is possibly the camera. Now the camera is found up here. So we have our five volt, we have our ground, we have our camera. So the five volt is obviously the red wire from your camera. The ground is going to be the black wire. The cam here would be the yellow wire coming in from your camera. And here they've given us another pad, which is called S6, which would be motor six output. But what's really nice about this, why they place this right here, is you'll have the ability to change the settings of this pad in order to have it control your camera's OSD, for example, change the brightness and all of these things. So in that perspective, it is rocking the latest features that people are looking for. And it again, it is a huge benefit here and it's really nice to have. Now, let's move to the video transmitter part. So the video transmitter is going to be connected right here. We have ground, we have 10 volts. 
This is really nice because that means your video transmitter is going to get cleaner voltage than raw battery voltage. But you will need to take something into consideration here before we proceed. So this cannot output 10 volts unless you give this guy full battery voltage. So this flight controller needs battery voltage. It needs a 3 to an 8S input voltage. So you don't need an ESC with a 5 volt regulator. You give it raw battery voltage and this thing will boot up and be able to give that 10 volts to VTX. So that's, you need to keep that in mind basically. So we have, again, we have the ground which is black wire for your video transmitter. 10 volt would be the red wire and the yellow wire would be the VTX here. TX3 would be the smart audio or the tramp protocol uh, that will allow you to change the channels and output power uh, from the on-screen display here. So this is also really nice, very well thought through, and I really like how everything is connecting very close to each other. So right now we've covered the camera, receiver, and video transmitter. Next might be a little bit harder, since now probably a lot of people gotten used to the stacks, is the ESC. The ESC is going to be connected right in this area right here. So now to properly show you how an ESC would be connected and also how to power this flight controller, I brought in another ESC, which is one of the best budget 6S ESCs you can possibly purchase right now. And um, I'll have it linked down below if you want to check that out. So here we have a real life test where we have an ESC with the connector. However, this doesn't have a connector and uh, or it could be the orientation different. But if you ever try to do this, you could you have a high probability of burning one of these two. So don't do that. So what you'd have to do is we'd have to cut the wires from the side in order to separate these wires. Now, if we take a look here on the bottom, we see plus and we see one, two, three, four, CUR, which is current, and then the negative. So let's make sense of this. Now, the first thing a flight controller needs in order to power up is obviously power. And what do we say? This thing takes raw battery voltage. So you would grab your ESC and you'd want to usually find bat or plus. So bat right there, we have the bat and the ground. So these first two are the power. So battery and the ground. So battery voltage and ground. So where would those go? So the ground would go to the minus right there. And the battery, or the plus it might be, depending on your ESC, would go to the plus right there. Very simple. You would solder that there and solder that there. So it's those two first ones right there. Hopefully you guys can see what I see. Then we have motors one, two, three, and 4. And those would go exactly accordingly. So one would solder to one, two would solder to two, three, and four would solder to three and four. Next, what we have is the current. Not all of them might have current, but for example, this one does, and it'll say CUR. And then you could take the line, which would be the one before the last here, uh, this one right there, and you would solder it to the current. However, now you're left with one uh, pad left over, which is TX. Now, this is, I believe, a Beale Heli 32 ESC, if I remember correctly, or I could be actually wrong here. But if it does have telemetry, for example, let's say this one did have telemetry, the TX here, you can do a couple things. You could just completely ignore it and remove it, or you can go ahead and set it up on a R pad that's available. So where would that be? Hmm. Well, we see we have an R pad down here. And that's RX4. So we would set up ESC telemetry on UART4 if we were to put it, install the uh, telemetry, the ESC telemetry. That's where you'd want to install it on the R4 right here. And then that would give you ESC telemetry and power it up and control every single motor. Really simple, actually. It's not even that complicated. I really like the price, the features, and everything about it. But now it still needs to be tested in the field. And this is a candidate for my next budget build right now because of the Bluetooth functionality. And actually, let me show you the Bluetooth functionality so you get a better idea of how it works. Now, this actually saved me a couple times with a couple quadcopters. I do have a couple e uh, flight controls with Bluetooth functionality. It's really nice if I forgot to set up my channel map order or you want to do some quick modifications, you can easily do that. So this powers up just normal, and you'll need to install the SpeedyB app. So hopefully we'll be able to remove the glare there. So you need to install the SpeedyB app. Make sure your Bluetooth is on. Then you would just click Bluetooth. Hopefully it'll pick it up because it's really close. And there we go. It picked it up that quick. We click on it, and we actually immediately log in, and we could modify everything we can on the Betaflight configurator. As you can tell, it's all live, which is really nice. So you know the orientation and everything. As you can tell, there's the arrow right there, and that's the arrow. And this is simulating the quadcopter. So that's awesome. You can control everything from here. Here we have our ports, which are the UARTs. And again, if you were to actually set up the ESC telemetry, like we said, on RX4, you'd want to go to UART4 here 
and you would want to go to, I think, sensors, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and you would set ESC here. And then that would give it the ESC, obviously save and reboot. And um, UART2 is where SBUS is or IBUS. Even the SBUS pad is actually uh, UART2 here. So let me just double check that for you. So UART2 is the serial RX, which is either going to be for SBUS or IBUS. So both pads, the RX2 and the SBUS, which are these two right here. So this is RX2. If you're putting IBUS, this is where you want to set it up. SBUS, you would set it up on this one. And both of these are actually connected to UART2 right here. And um, yeah, one is inverted and one's not inverted. I don't want to get too technical into that if you're new so you don't get lost, but just follow what I just said earlier. And everything is already pretty much pretty set up for you here. So that's really nice in that perspective. And again, if we wanted to use the smart audio feature like we saw, which is on TX3 here, then we would go to UART3, we go to peripherals, and then we could put smart audio right there. It's just that simple. Keep everything else disabled, save and reboot, and basically now this thing is set up right now. It's ready for us to install a quadcopter. And you can do everything else. You want to change the gyro, uh, you want to put the craft name. You can even control the OSD, which is really, really nice. And you know, change your channel map order and check if your receiver is working. And again, if we were to connect the receiver right now while it's plugged in, we can see the current commands that are being executed uh, inside the beta flight configurator right here. And we can actually see if our receiver would be working or not, which is something also really nice. And again, you can't go wrong for 22 bucks. And it even has SD card expansion and a freaking barometer. That is insane. That is gorgeous. So um, hopefully it tests very well. I'll be testing it very soon. I'm very happy it doesn't have an ICM gyro and it's using an MPU 6000 gyro, which means less headache. And um, this is where everything's going right now with the MPU 6000 gyros. And I really hope this video helped someone out there. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And uh, everything's linked down below. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.